In this episode of Creator View Chronicles, we're gonna talk about the beginning process of getting the Mac app working. How I went from the initial run looking like this to now looking a little bit nicer to this and then the, the lead up to launch of the Mac app. Also gonna talk about the process, like more developer-y stuff on how I got the Mac app running, how I organized my project, how this tweet led to a call with a few members of the SwiftUI team at Apple. And then we'll finish up the video with a quick run through of the uh, app as it is now when it's a couple weeks away from release, uh, but it's a far cry from looking like this. We'll come back to the process of getting the initial Mac app up and running, but I wanna run through it real quick to show you where the app started. So as you can see, our sidebar looks like crap. The overall dashboard looks fine, uh, except some of the buttons are messed up. That was a big difference coming from iOS to Mac. Mac does buttons quite differently. Again, we'll touch on that. Um, but you see the dashboard doesn't look too bad. Uh, income looks a little rough, like the toolbar uh, could use a, a lot of work there. Let's try to add something. Oh, subscriptions looks horrible. Okay, let's actually uh, subscribe. Okay, so I edited out me like entering my password to do that uh, actual subscription, but cool. Now when we add this, that looks rough. Okay, I see how the buttons don't look great. Cancel that, cool. Okay, video schedule. Uh, doesn't look, you know, that doesn't look like it's supposed to. Let's try to uh, add a video here. The add button is all messed up in the lower right. Uh, that's not great. <laughs> you can see I had a lot of work to do, uh, you know, from the start. So we'll cancel that. Uh, taxes, you can see I don't even have channel stats because there's an issue with the Google Auth library on Mac OS. I'll talk about that later. Uh, taxes, uh, again, this giant button when I add a ta okay, that looks bad. You're starting to get the point, right? The initial run, okay, that looks fine, but these are basic screens, nothing going too crazy here. Um, settings looks a little weird, but you can see this is what I started with. After I finally got it running, I was like, okay, cool, this is it. Here's my, my canvas. Let's start making this look nicer, which we'll run through at the end of the video. But right now I wanna start talking about the process. So for that, I'll go back to Xcode. Now, I'll make this a little bigger because I know it's probably small there. Um, even though all of this has to do with like the uh, files over here, shared iOS and Mac OS. So before I started on this Mac OS stuff, all we had was one folder. We didn't have iOS, Mac OS, and shared. So what I did, and this may be a little crazy, I created new files and copy and pasted every line of code into the Mac OS folder. And then you can see when you're on a file, right now we're on the creatorview.app, if I pull up the right thing, you can see target membership, right? iOS and Mac OS, because right now, uh, this is a later version of the project where the app is shared. But what I did was I copied everything in our folder. We didn't have an iOS folder. So all of our utilities, you know, model, all the screens, all the custom views, one by one, created a Mac OS folder, copied that there, created versions of Mac OS, pasted it there, and then I made the targets unique, right? So everything in the iOS folder, which was the existing iPad app, I made only target iOS. Uh, all the duplicate files in the macOS folder, I made only target macOS. And then I went in the macOS folder, cleared all the errors, which most of them were, uh, I just had to bump the minimum macOS support to 12 because I'm using StoreKit 2, Async Await, all of the latest and greatest Swift UI stuff. So that cleared a bunch of them. And then a lot of the other errors I had to clear up had to do with like uh, color because things like, you know, UI color dot label are named differently on Mac. So a lot of the errors had to do with that as well. And then some nav bar issues, the way Mac OS handles nav bars differently than iOS. So that was basically all the errors, but it may seem crazy to duplicate the entire file, but I thought it was a good chance to do some spring cleaning. Cause you know, after you've been working on a, a project for a while, uh, it gets messy, right? You have some zombie code, zombie files that you've refactored and forgot to delete. So I took this as an opportunity to do spring cleaning. But what I did with the Mac OS file, uh, with all the duplicate folders, like all these extensions, I went through and did like an audit, like, okay, what can be shared? What can not be shared? Um, you know, could this be refactored? It was a good overall project audit. So the process went like this. I went screen by screen, file by file, getting it working on the Mac and looking functional on the Mac, which you'll see in a bit, and then revisiting the file and be like, okay, can this be shared uh, or can it not be shared? So I went by that file by file, if it could be shared, put it in the shared file, made a target both of them like you see here. Uh, if it couldn't be shared, I left it in the Mac OS and you know, obviously it was only targeting Mac OS. So after all that, uh, let me actually switch to the main branch to where we're, we're at now with the current Mac app and I'll show you uh, kind of the file sharing. Okay, now we're back on main, um, which is the, the present state of the code base. Um, and you can start to see some of these uh, conditionals. Let me show you one example. So shared, 
uh, anyway, I ended up sharing about 60 to 70% of the code, right? Like I mentioned, the dashboard view is shared, income table is shared, data visualizations are shared. Um, there's a lot of shared screens that I, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to. And let me talk about the criteria for what was shared and what's not shared. And I think dashboard view is a decent um, example. So you can see like pretty much all of our model and our view models, that was all shared um, for obvious reasons, has nothing to do with UI. Um, you know, all of our extensions and stuff for the most part um, were shared. But let me go to the screens here. Uh, we'll go to dashboard view. Um, so you can see these compiler directives, right? If Mac OS, else, and if. So right, like I said, nav bars are handled a little differently. Like for example, on Mac OS, you get a navigation bar subtitle. I wanted to set the frame to max width because um, I was testing on my ultra wide and it got a little insane. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm restricting some of the screens that way. And then inline doesn't exist on like iOS. So this is just an example of compiler directives. So my kind of rule of thumb, if I could share a screen uh, that only had like two or three compiler directives and it was kind of minor stuff, I would share it. Because what I want to avoid is one shared screen, but I have 18 compiler directives and the screen is just so confusing, it's hard to work in. Definitely avoid that, that gets its own file. So again, if there's only like two or maybe even three, depending on what they are, I kept it in uh, as a shared screen. So that's kind of how I went about that. So to sum up the process, like I said, I, I copied the entire project into the Mac OS and went file by file, screen by screen, redesigned the screens, uh, and then, you know, did these compiler directives where necessary or made it its own separate macOS file if necessary, built up this shared folder in the iOS folder and the macOS folder, as you can see here. And again, we're, we're sharing most stuff. So yeah, I would say about 60 to 70% of it um, was shared. A little side note, this tweet here, put it out there, I didn't think anything of it. I was just excited that the Mac app was up and running and kind of took me by surprise that like, how bad it looked. I was like, oh, got a lot of work to do. It wasn't like a knock on SwiftUI at all, but it caused a, a developer evangelist at Apple to reach out and schedule a phone call with a couple members of the SwiftUI team that was focusing on the Mac. And I think it's just because, you know, not a lot of people are building Mac apps in SwiftUI in a production environment. So uh, they just really wanted to get my feedback on the experience. It's a really cool call. Uh, again, they just asked a lot of questions on like, what are the hiccups I ran into? Um, how, how do I think the process of, you know, converting an iPad app to a Mac app using SwiftUI and the shared files and all this stuff, how could that be improved? Uh, again, what, what were, well, they saw the 150 errors and they wanted to know like, what were all those errors? And I had to tell them, right? Most of it's because I wasn't supporting uh, the latest uh, Mac OS. Uh, a lot of the errors had to do with like the semantic colors. Again, like UI color dot label, UI color dot secondary system background. Those don't all have Mac equivalents. So now that we're in like the, uh, the updated code, let me go to utilities, constants. So here's what I had to do for color, right? So you see, right, so dot label. So now we can just do color dot label. And if it's Mac OS, I return NS color, label color, or for an iOS label, see, same thing with system background, secondary system background. So little things like that uh, I had to do uh, as well. But anyway, call went great. They just kind of asked a lot of questions. Pretty cool uh, experience to be talking to the SwiftUI team. I got to ask a lot of questions specifically about tables in Mac OS, really dove into that. But yeah, it was about an hour, hour long phone call with the SwiftUI team talking about my experience building on the Mac uh, with SwiftUI and how I think it could be improved. So, so that was pretty cool. So yeah, that was the basic process. Uh, it took about a week and a half to get from that starting point that I showed a little bit ago to the uh, unpolished functional version that I'm about to show you right now. So after all that, let's run through where the Mac app is at as of February 24th, and I'm calling this the functional but not polished version. Got a couple weeks to polish it up before we release it. So anyway, let's run through it real quick. Dashboard, uh, this was obviously a screen that could be shared. You can see it looks very similar. You know, we get the, the rolling 12 month functionality uh, here as well. Uh, income streams, this is a good uh, example of what I was mentioning earlier about how I don't want it to feel like an iPad app just on the Mac, right? Like I said, the Mac app is the star of the show. That is the main product. So I want that to be a awesome Mac native experience. However, I feel like this screen right now feels like an iPad app on the Mac, and here's why, right? So let me go to a uh, year with more numbers here so you can see. So this is basically a spreadsheet, right? So on a Mac with a mouse pointer, I expect to be able to click into a cell, like say February for courses, and just edit that and move on. Again, just like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet. That is not the case currently. When I tap on any of these columns here, I get, by the way, this is part of the not polished. These sheets need to be redesigned. Um, they're redesigned a little bit, like here's the iPad version. Again, you can see big, fat, chunky touch targets, whereas this is more precise with the mouse, but it needs some design love. Again, functional, not polished. That's where we're at right now. 
But anyway, on a Mac, like this is kind of a, a suboptimal user experience in my opinion. Instead of just editing one column, I gotta pull up the sheet, find February, click in here and edit it, right? That's just, it's not the end of the world, but it's not optimal. So eventually I do wanna redesign this screen or the design probably won't change, but restructure it so these are individual text fields that I can click into and edit. So that's a good example again of an iPad app on a Mac, living with it for now, but I'm gonna address that uh, in the future. Uh, data visualizations. Again, this screen is uh, shared. Uh, again, we'll go to a more interesting year here, 2021. Uh, you know, you can see courses and consulting. Uh, there you go, you can kind of compare those. But yeah, this is shared directly from the iPad. Didn't have to do much here. Uh, video schedule, again, shared from the iPad. This is all syncing up, by the way, too, uh, with the iPad and the Mac, the data syncs. It's not, I haven't implemented CloudKit subscriptions to where if you can imagine an iPad sitting right next to the screen share and I updated something on my iPad and it magically updates in real time on the Mac, that's not hooked up yet. Uh, that's what I need to be working on this week is the CloudKit subscriptions. Uh, in order to get it to sync, you kind of have to like navigate away and then navigate back and then it'll refetch and resync. But you know, we'll get there. So again, schedule works just the same, quick little drag and drop. Uh, you can tap on any you know, blank space. Again, these data entry points need a lot of design love. Functional, not polished, but uh, you can see here, you know, sponsored live stream. That's how you would create a new video here. We'll create a sponsored Swift News. Uh, Swift News on 228, save, cool. Uh, there you go. And of course you can like drag it around. So shared, nothing uh, too crazy there. Goals was a bit different. You'll notice there's no channel stats. Again, here's the channel stats on the iPad. There's no channel stats and then on goals, there's no like AdSense or subscribers or anything like that. That is because the library I'm using for Google Auth, uh, it's called like Google Sign In for iOS, doesn't support Mac OS. There is an old library, uh, old Objective-C library, it's still maintained, but it's just old, that does support Mac OS Google Auth. Um, however, it's a CocoaPod. You developers out there know that if it's a CocoaPod, now I have to install CocoaPods, I have to convert my project into a workspace. It's like a whole thing. Whereas right now my project is nice, neat, Swift packages, it's great. So I wanna avoid that. So for right now, channel stats and you know tracking those goals are not a thing on Mac OS. Now, looking at this GitHub issue, you can see the Google sign-in support for Mac OS work started in early January. Here we are towards the end of February. I haven't heard anything yet from this, but uh, hopefully within a couple weeks, a month or two, maybe three months, that'll be supported in the library we're currently using, which is a modern Swift package, all that stuff. So my plan is to launch the Mac app without channel stats, and hopefully a month or two later we can put it in. And the reason I'm okay with that is because channel stats was always a convenience feature, right? You can see this stuff in the Creator uh, Studio app that YouTube gives you. You can see this stuff on your YouTube channel. This is nothing unique to Creator View. Again, it was built out of convenience so they didn't have to go to other apps. So it's not like a crucial feature. So I'm okay going without it. Now, you see here, I asked about a release date. Now, if they tell me, yeah, it's not coming out until Q4 2022, I'll revisit that. But if they say, yeah, we're hoping April or May of 2022, you know, I can probably live without having channel stats in the Mac app for those two months for the sake of the long-term organization of the project. Taxes, this is a, a screen that is very different. So here I'm utilizing the new in Mac OS 12 and SwiftUI tables. So I'll put up the iPad app version, what that looks like, and then here what this looks like uh, on the Mac app. Because again, this feels very native Mac app. And that's what I'm going for. I think it'll take a couple months to get there to be like a great native Mac experience and not feel so much iPad on the Mac type stuff, but we're gonna get there. It'll take some time. So that's where I'm currently at. And again, I mean, about privacy feedback, same, same things there. Um, so that's where the uh, Mac app is currently. You can see where it started, some, some quick little video here of how that went uh, to what it is now. And this took about a week, week and a half. So I was very pleased with how fast I was able um, to do this. So much so that I'm targeting March 10th for a launch date. In previous videos, and I think even on the website, I say maybe April or May for the Mac app. Like I thought it was gonna be a lot rougher than it was. It turned out to be pretty smooth. Um, I don't know what to attribute that to. Maybe it's just SwiftUI on Mac OS or how I design my screens. I don't know, but uh, went smoother than expected. So the plan now is to launch the Mac app on the next release. Right now it's February 24th. Our next release is March 10th. Um, to, to launch on March 10th. And what's missing right now is the CloudKit subscriptions. So things sync magically if you have an iPad right next to your Mac. Uh, and then just overall polish, like I mentioned, you know, on this like video schedule stuff, uh, adding a new one, like this is not a great looking screen. So just overall, and my buttons here don't look great. You can see here on like income streams, uh, cancel, delete, update, I don't know. Like it can just be nicer uh, on the Mac. So 
CloudKit subscriptions, uh, a layer of polish, and hopefully we're launching on March 10th.